Let's see, what do you know about the Reformation? Um, Tell me one thing. Yeah, Protestant Reformation, yeah. Uh, That's a good point, though. There's other Reformations. But yes, the Protestant Reformation. Yeah. Um, it was like a change, like a break from um, Catholicism. Okay, yeah, a break from Catholicism, exactly. Uh, does anybody know anything else about the Reformation? All right, this is good. Uh, Dale's getting pencils, so you have to remember this stuff. Um, wait, wait, um, yeah. is it like the word... Is it like a root or con somehow connected to the word reformed? Yes, exactly. Reform means to change. If you have like a criminal that's reformed, they change their ways. Uh, if you're trying to reform something, you're trying to change it. So it's about a change in the church. Um, so what's question one on your sheet? Three facts about his life. No, question one. <laughs> Any ideas? Yes? Martin Luther. Yeah, Martin Luther. So you need pencils, remember to write down Martin Luther. Alright, so Martin Luther was this guy. His dad sent him off to school to be a lawyer. He didn't take to it that much, so he left school pretty quickly. Uh, well, he left the practice of law. So one day he's coming back from school, riding on a horse alongside the road, um, and this huge storm comes up. Lightning strikes right by him. And he cries out, God, if you get me through this, I'll become a monk. He survives a storm, and he joins the monastery, leaves school, joins a monastery. Um, so he's there, actually, for a while. He ends up getting a degree in, uh, you know, like, the equivalent of, like, a bachelor's degree. Um, eventually, later on in his life, he gets a doctorate, and he ends up, like, teaching biblical studies. So, um, he's in this monastery. And he struggles a lot with, um, he's always worried he's not worthy enough of God's love. Um, and I'm going to show a clip from a movie about his life. So in this clip, he's having all these personal struggles. So the head of his, one of the heads of his order sends him to deliver some letters to Rome. And he's really excited because Rome is where, who, what Catholic figure lives in Rome? The Pope. The Pope. Rome is the center of the church. And at this point, the Catholic Church is pretty much the only church in all of Europe. So this is the center point of the church. So in his head, this is going to be this kind of very spiritual experience, this time of like renewal. He's going to be, he's going to be able to see some of these um, relics. It's on. Yes, it's on, yeah. So um, some of the practices at the, so actually, so some of the practices at the time, one thing was, there was this idea, Paul, let you catch up with the writing. You should have at least three things about his life, or at least two. Okay, so um, some things you're going to see when he gets to Rome. So there was this idea at the time that nobody could really be good enough to go straight to heaven, even with Christ's um, sacrifice and grace. Uh, so when you die, you spend a certain amount of time in purgatory, which wasn't heaven or wasn't hell, but it was just kind of in between place. And uh, depending on how good or bad you were in life, you'd spend different amounts of time. But there were things you could do in life to take time off of purgatory. So uh, one thing you could do is do some kind of sign of penance, like going on a pilgrimage. Um, uh, relics of the saints. So sometimes they would have, you know, 
Um, like the, uh, and here, he visited the church that has the skull of John the Baptist. So the idea was, if you could actually look at that actual skull of John the Baptist, this great saint, this great church person, and meditate on his life and think about it, like having that physical object there would just help you really understand what he went through. And that would kind of elevate your soul and give you some time off of purgatory. And there's all these other things that you could do. Um, so he's, that's part of his idea. He goes, he's like a tourist kind of, like he's going to the Christian center. He's going to view all these relics and have this opportunity to have this great spiritual experience. So um, there's no fast forward or pause on this because we want to remote for the thing. So I'm going to start this a little earlier than I usually do. But it's a pretty short clip. So. Um, It'll get brighter once they go outside. Remember I said how he was kind of really tormented and concerned about being worthy of God's love and being not good enough? He has had five years of practice. He knows all the weak spots. I'm sorry about today. I'm not here to scold you, Marty. I'm too full of sin to be a prisoner. You know, in two years I've never heard you confess anything remotely interesting. I live in terror of judgment. Then you think self-hatred will save you? Have you ever dared to think that God is not just? He has us born, tainted by sin. Then he's angry with us all our lives for our faults. This righteous judge who damns us for threatening us with the fires of hell. I know, I know, I know I'm evil to think it. You are not evil. You are just not honest. God isn't angry with you. You are angry with God. I wish there were no God. Martin, what is it you seek? A merciful God, a God whom I can love, a God who loves me. Then look to Christ, bind yourself to Christ, and you will know God's love. Say to him, I'm yours, save me. I am yours, save me. The brothers are not happy with your decision. They think there are others in our cloister better suited to deliver your letters to Rome. Martin has two degrees and an aptitude for all. It will be a legal brief he carries. Besides, it will do him good to be out in the world. This is where I usually start the clip. Yeah.
for your meditation, for your kind of coming closer to God. It became just, you know, a, an artifact. Put your money in, touch the skull, boom, 500 years off purgatory. Um, it became mechanical. There was nothing spiritual about it. Uh, the guy was selling um, images of the saints, and it was almost like a snake oil salesman. You know, he's like Saint Paul for ball, for bad back, Saint Barnabas for swollen feet. You know, it was like almost like home, like things you'd see on a, like QVC or something. When he did, when he went to go do that um, pilgrimage thing to free his father's soul from purgatory. Um, you know, the guy, it was like an assembly line, like, he, every time someone came up, he'd do that thing, like, point in, here you go, mechanical, do the thing, he's free, next. And uh, when he got to the top of the steps, there was a guy, what was the guy standing there doing? He had a staff with, he like yeah, he's selling the downs, exit through the gift shop, you know. Um, you had your, your Rome moment, you want a souvenir of that. Um, Rome was basically a tourist trap. Um, I don't know if early on he saw a, uh, a monk um, visiting a prostitute. And one thing he says to leaders is, they have brothels just for monks. This place is crazy, it's not at all. He thought he was going to have his faith renewed, and instead he had a lot more questions. Um, so he really started to have really think about the stuff, the actions that were going on. Oh, oh, and who rode by in the gold armor? Did you hear they said it was coming? The Pope. The Pope! There's a guy begging there, a poor guy starving, and the Pope's riding by in gold armor. So things didn't seem right with the church. So uh, pretty soon after that, he sent to uh, get a doctorate in um, theology. And for the first time, he actually reads the Bible. How crazy is that? He's been a monk, he's been very faithful, but he's never read the Bible. Because who read the Bible back then? Free Pope. Pope did, yeah. Like, uh, priests did when they were doing that, but almost nobody read the Bible. The Bible was in Latin. Most people couldn't read, and if they could read, they read, you know, German or French. They didn't read Latin. Um, so even monks did not read the Bible. There wasn't that many available. Uh, it was a very painstaking, expensive process to copy a Bible. Um, so finally he is able to read the Bible, and he has even more questions about the practices of the church. Uh, so the breaking point, uh, this Archbishop, Albrecht von Brandenburg, uh, finds himself uh, owing a lot of money to the Pope, for the construction of this grand new cathedral. He's making this enormous, huge cathedral. It's going to be kind of like his monument for the ages. So the church needs a lot of money to build it. So he recruits this guy, this uh, priest uh, named John Tetzel. He is kind of like uh, the QVC salesman of the, uh, of the Catholic Church. Uh, what's um, like QVC? Oh, like the Home Shopping Network, um, or he's like uh, the ShamWow guy, or um, who's the other guy, Billy something. But, you know, he's a salesman. That's kind of his specialty, raising funds, getting donations from people. He gets authorized by the Pope to offer this one-time only special dispensation. For a one-time donation, you will get a special dispensation that can free anybody instantly from purgatory. And he even had this catchphrase. Uh, the moment the coin in the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory springs. That was his slogan. And uh, that, this really sets Martin Luther over the edge. He said, we have people, we have starving people, and we're building this huge, expensive cathedral instead of helping them. Um, also, the Bible doesn't say the Pope can grant salvation, which is essentially what the Pope is doing here. Only Christ can. None of this seems right. So, he does a lot of thinking, does a lot of writing, and um, he starts writing all these uh, pamphlets that kind of go out to everybody. He becomes very popular. After the people start questioning what the church is doing. And uh, he ends up getting in trouble by the church. There's a whole trial. He's asked to recant. And he says, no, I can't. His famous line is, here I stand, I can do no other. Eventually, there's a break from the Catholic Church. Um, 
it's important to remember, Luther didn't want to start a new church. He wanted to reform the Catholic Church. He said, our practices are out of line with Scripture. But when they refused to change, he ended up starting this kind of new faith. It's also important to remember that in the century since, the Catholic Church has actually come around to almost everything that Luther wanted. I mean, does the Catholic Church sell indulgences anymore? No. No. Um, do we have relics? Like, does the church in town boast that they have, uh, you know, the sandal of St. Mark, and you can come and meditate over it? No. No. Relics, they don't have... Yeah. It's not a thing anymore. Even like uh, the, so, in the century since, the Catholic Church has actually come around to a lot of what Luther said, but at the time, the people in power did not want to change. The Pope did not want to give up his golden armor. Um, the people did not want to, yeah, so. Um, so, uh, Luther came up with some guiding principles. We're going to have five of them here, okay? So. Oh, okay, it's about them. Um, wait till we're done with the five guiding All principles, right. okay? Because that's kind of the important part. Mm. All right, so sometimes these are called the five solas. What does solo mean? If you're singing a solo, or you're doing something solo, what does that mean? Do it alone. By yourself, alone, yes. Go on it alone. Yeah, so, the first one is sola, we're going to say scriptura. What is scripture? If we say scripture, what is scripture? It's, um, it, is it a, um, is it like where something holy is written? Yeah, so we call the Bible scripture, right? So sola scriptura means the Bible alone. And that basically means, he said, when we're trying to figure out stuff, our guiding, uh, our Bible is the highest authority. Our stuff should come from the Bible and from reason. So if he said, you know, why do we sell indulgences? Because in the Bible it seems like to say grace only comes from Christ. And in the response you would get like, well, this, the you know, 22nd council uh, decided that this was okay. He's like, right, but that's not a good reason. Just because, or because we've always done it this way, that's not a good reason, you know, you should be able to explain it and justify it with the Bible and logic. So, go back to the source, the Bible alone. Alright, so we have sola uh, fide, I want to make sure I'm writing all these, yeah, which means faith alone. If you want to, you can just write this, you don't have to write the Latin part, you can just write the second part. So, what Luther said was, we're saved because we have faith in Christ. That's it. There's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. So, giving money to the church can't get us salvation. Uh, go, kneeling up a step and praying can't get us salvation. Touching a skull of someone who's been dead for centuries, no matter how great a person they were, can't get us salvation. Only faith in Christ gets us salvation. Nothing else. We can't earn it. We just have to have faith in Christ. So, uh, we have sola, I think this is right, gathia, which is grace alone. So, all we can do is have faith in Christ, and we're saved just through Christ's grace, not because we uh, earn it, not because we're worthy of it, not because Christ likes us a lot, not because we're great people, um, you know, not because we're you know, strong and attractive or because we're weak and ugly, just because Christ's grace. We don't merit salvation. He just gives it to us freely. So by grace alone, uh, sola Christus. What do you think that is? Christ, yep. Christ alone. So basically, Christ alone 
is the head of the church. He doesn't share power with the Pope or the priests. Um, we have salvation only through Christ, through Christ's sacrifice, through the resurrection. Um, you know, not because we gave money to a cathedral, but Christ alone. That's the center point of the church. And then the last one, sola deo gloria. Anybody know what Latin deo means? Someone said, uh, if you have a deus ex machina in a story. That's okay. Deo is God. So, he said, we live for the glory of God alone. That is our primary purpose in life. What are some ways that we glorify God? Pray. Pray. Great. What's another way we glorify God? Yes. Refusing sin. Yeah, trying to live a good life. You know, although we know we can't achieve perfection on our own, but we can always try to get better. We can't always be perfect. We can't live up to the example of Christ perfectly, but our task is to try to live better every day, to try to resist sin, to do what's right. Well, there's no way we can glorify God. What do we do every Sunday that Dale talked about? Worship. Very directly, we glorify God in worship. Um, what if we see someone like that beggar in that thing who needs help? How can we glorify God? Help them. Help them, right. Doing what Christ wants us to do. Help those less fortunate than us. Love our neighbors. All that glorifies God. And that's our primary purpose in life. So. Um, oh, can I use the bathroom now? Yeah, you can use the bathroom. Okay. Oh, leave your phone here. Huh? Leave your phone here. I know that can be a distraction. Yeah, fine. Uh, All right. Okay, so Luther started this movement. People started, uh, and actually, it got kind of bloody and violent for a little while because people had this huge reaction. They said, oh, uh, Catholics are idolaters. They're going against God. And they were burning churches and beating up priests. And Luther was horrified. So he had to write out another thing that said, stop that. Don't do that. This is not what we're about. But eventually, right, uh, a new church was started. Uh, in other countries, other people kind of kept this Reformation going. So John Calvin in Scotland... Uh, another big figure, and he started the Presbyterian Church. There was a guy named Zwingli in Switzerland. In Holland, the RCA was formed. Um, what is the church, the German church that Luther's followers started called? The Lutherans, yes, named after Martin Luther, exactly. Uh, Methodists, and another one, Episcopals, all kind of came from this break off of Catholicism. Um, so, uh, any questions about anything? So, um, I'll just say one big thing. So, uh, another big thing that Luther did was, for the first time, he translated the Bible into German, into people's common languages. And because there was this new invention called the printing press, which let him get all these flyers and writings out to people, he was also able to start making copies of the Bible in German, not in Latin, which was unheard of. But now, everyday people can get a Bible and read it. And this was a revelation. People had lived their lives in the church, faithful Christians, gone to Mass every week, couldn't understand it because it was in Latin, but now they could actually read the Bible. And it was translated in other languages too. So that was another like, huge thing. All right. Um, I have two questions here. What time we got? Uh, everybody take about a minute and write down something you found surprising about today's lesson, or something new that you learned, something interesting. So Charlie, take a minute and write your own answer to that. What was something you found surprising or something new you learned today?
done, put your pencil down and look up here so I know you're done. meditating on, you know, the life of a saint or something, like John the Baptist, thinking about all he did and went through, and kind of using that as inspiration for you, isn't really a bad idea theologically, but what it became where, you know, pay your ten bucks, touch the skull, now you've gotten some salvation out of it. Yeah, that that was, that practice was yeah, against scripture, so, yeah. Um, I said that, like, how many other churches are formed, like, after this? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. A part of that was because the Catholic Church still kind of ran a lot of the stuff. Like, a lot of these reformers had to go into hiding. Like, it was illegal to print the Bible in the vernacular. So they couldn't kind of coordinate really well. So you just had to have the little pop-up things, kind of underground movements at first. Yeah. Andrew. Um, I was just wondering, it's like, in this, like, like, um, how strange it is that with all this like stuff in this like modern world we live in, how it can still feel like like some of the thoughts and fears of these people are still here. Ooh, like what? Um, like you know, like not really like like when you're a little bit confused about a lot of things, and you know. And it's and it's hard because you want you want to believe in it and you want to trust in God, mm -hmm. but it can feel like sometimes, you know, like to the way certain people depict it, it is like this unmerciful judge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially again, he never read the Bible. He just had what people taught him. Yeah. But there's an entire book in the Bible called Lamentations, which is basically the writer going, why God, why is this happening? And one of my Old Testament teachers said, he feels like one of the reasons that's in the Bible is to say, it's okay sometimes to have these questions, to wonder about stuff, to be confused about things. There's a whole book in the Bible that's just someone venting about that, basically. So, Charlie. Um, I said I didn't know that the Pope wore gold armor. I just thought that he would always be like carried around in, like some carriage or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Pope today, I mean, that's for protection, basically. That was, Gold armor is for protection. If he just had armor on, you'd say, well, you know, he's a big public figure. I didn't know he just rode around like, on a horse alone. Yeah, and he would go, uh, well, he, had, he wasn't oh, alone, yeah, he had like, attendants, but right. yeah, he would go hunting, and, right, the actual Vatican, they had, like, all this gold and treasure, like, stored up and stuff. It was crazy for a while, yeah. Meredith? Um, I found it surprising that none of the priests had read the Bible. Yeah, yeah, no, priests had, but right, none of the monks, monks were really given access to it unless they went to study a lot of times, yeah. <coughs> All right, um, real quick then, one last thing, write down one question, one question that you have. Try to think of one question. 